Hello, everybody. My name is Joe. My amateur radio call sign is KI4ASK, and today we're going to talk about APRS, Automatic Packet Reporting System, which is kind of like text messaging using ham radio technology. Recently, a YouTube channel that I follow by Mike, K8MRD, made the claim that APRS is the most worthless mode in ham radio, and I beg to differ. Thought I would put together a short rebuttal video. I want to address some of Mike's points offer an alternative viewpoint, and tell you a little bit about how I use APRS. In a future video, I may do a deeper dive into some of the cool things that you can do with APRS, but we'll just stick to uh, a couple of the highlights to keep it short. APRS, for those that don't know, is a lot like text messaging, but it uses ham radio technology. Uh, radio to radio, radio to digipeter, and it works just like a a regular radio repeater and rebroadcast transmission to a wider audience. It's also gated onto the internet, so that really extends its functionality. Mike, we have met before. We met in Huntsville, Alabama at the Ham Fest a couple years ago. I was with my wife, who's also a ham, KI4HHI. This was Huntsville Ham Fest 2021. And I really enjoy your channel. Uh, but brother, I got to tell you, the uh, the recent video did not sit well with me. I do agree with you to each his own, and this is a big enough hobby that everybody can find what they enjoy and do more of that and stay away from the things that they don't enjoy. But a couple of the claims that you made in the video uh, seem to be false equivalents uh, and, and not well uh, thought out. So uh, I wanted to offer an alternative viewpoint about this. Now we do have in common uh, some friends that enjoy the mode and uh, it is a lot of fun. The absence of a digi peter, which is an APRS repeater, I think you called it in your video, uh, does extend the reach and make the use of APRS a lot more enjoyable. I'm sorry that there's not many digi peters where you live. Um, here in the Atlanta area where I live, we have lots of digi peters. Uh, in the mountains of North Georgia, you pretty much can hit a digi peter anywhere. Uh, Mike, you said you woke up and thought about APRS. Brother, <laughs> I enjoy the mode, but I'm not sure I wake up thinking about it. Um, I'm glad you went out to Big Bend National Park. That You're right. That is a gorgeous park. It's, it's massive. Uh, it is not covered by digipeters nor FM amateur radio repeaters, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, so why anyone in the world would even consider using APRS out there, I have no idea. Except satellites. Uh, in fact, in a well-publicized uh, situation in 2019, a, a, a fellow ham, Clayton W5PFG, uh, got stranded out there and used an amateur radio satellite to, uh, to do a phone patch and, uh, and get help. And you'll be interested to know that there are APRS digipeters on board some of the satellites. In fact, I will share a few of uh, screenshots from that. So this is kind of cool. This is what the APRS beacon looks like uh, coming down from the International Space Station. And here's a packet from a station in Mexico. So you can indeed use satellites with APRS and that is very useful. You can even have short QSOs. Here is a message exchange. This one I got from KJ4QJA in Lakeland, Florida using the International Space Station Digipeter back to me here in Atlanta. Sorry that your experience with it uh, has, has not been great, but by your own admission, Mike, you said all you've really done with it is drive down the road and beacon your position a little bit. There's all kinds of cool things that you can do with APRS. Uh, besides messaging friends and seeing where they're located at, uh, yes, you can send email with it. Uh, like you, Mike, I, I don't, I don't really want to send email when I'm I'm playing radio. Um, uh, Windlink, notwithstanding, I do do a little bit of Windlink, but that's mostly for emergency communications, practice, and training. Speaking of which. I have been involved in ARIES and emergency communications and now OXCOM, auxiliary communications, for a long time. Really, since I've been in the hobby, almost 20 years, 
I have never heard anyone make the claim that APRS could be used in an emergency or life-threatening situation. Quite the contrary, the guidance has always been to use the tool that best suits the mission. And why anybody would use APRS without uh, coverage or the proper equipment, um, I've never heard anybody say that, so I don't know who was telling you that. You also said in the video that you feel like there are two main areas of the hobby where uh, the fan base is rather uh, strong in their opinions in favor of their modes. Number one is CW. I agree. There was still a CW requirement when I got into the hobby. Uh, I did pass the test, but it is uh, not necessarily my favorite mode. Sorry, CW people. Um, and then you said the other one's APRS. Um, I don't know that I agree with that. Uh, people who enjoy APRS just kind of use it. Uh, we, we don't necessarily uh, uh, try to force other people to, uh, to adopt the method. Um, so I'm not sure where that came from. Uh, I consider myself a, a fan of the mode, but other than this video and a couple other short ones where I've used APRS, I, I don't know that I've been uh, really driving home that message. So I'm not sure where that comes from. I would encourage you to take a fresh look at the mode, Mike. I started using APRS about 20 years ago. Uh, it was a little cumbersome, not a lot of DigiPeter coverage. As cell phones become more prominent, APRS kind of fizzed out a little bit, but with better equipment, and now with the use of eye gates in which APRS traffic is routed on the internet, it's become a useful mode. I have used it to do several things. I use it, like I said before, to text message friends, see where they're at. When I'm going on a soda activation, I can spot myself. I can tell people where I'm going. They never know when I'm going to hit the top of the summit, but they can follow my progress. I can get weather forecasts from it. I can send text messages from it. Um, I actually used it two years ago. My wife and I were doing a soda activation of Iron Mountain in Park City, Utah. I had told our grown daughter ahead of time who dropped us off to track us on APRS in case anything happened. I showed her how to use APRS.fi, which is a website that you can use to uh, track APRS traffic. And it was one of our early YouTube videos and I neglected to have a battery backup. My phone died. Uh, our daughter was not able to track us using cell phone, even though Park City has lots of cell phone coverage, but she was able to follow our progress on APRS, and I could even text her from that. So there is a situation where there was available equipment. I had shown a family member how to access the information, and it worked, and she was able to pick us up after we came down from the summit. So uh, anyway, appreciate your videos, Mike and uh, appreciate the fact that this hobby is big enough to have lots of different opinions, but I'm not sure that saying it's the most worthless mode in ham radio really is a fair statement. In a future video, I'll try to put together some examples of some fun things to do with APRS. Last year, I gave a presentation about APRS to our ham radio club. Here's some of the useful things that you can use APRS with. I'll put a link to the presentation in the video description. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for tuning in and listening to me sitting here in the car talking to you about APRS. Have a great week, and I hope to catch you on the air. 7-3. This is KI4ASK. Testing, testing. All right, let's see how the lighting's going to work here.